Okay, I uh, appreciate you coming here for this last session. I actually thought uh, this is a good turnout. My name is Jeremy Bentley, I'm the CEO of SmartLogic. Very pleased that you uh, did not opt for the deep dive. Um, so I'm assuming, therefore, that you'll forgive me if I don't show source code. Um, I could show you source code, but my knowledge of Fortran, Pascal, and COBOL has been a bit outdated. So, so anyway, I will show you demonstrations of systems. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about um, metadata and big data. Okay. Uh, and then by way of introduction of smart logic, uh, we started the company in 2006. Uh, we have about 300 clients. I'm going to draw on the experience of those 300 clients uh, to explain some of the projects. Um, based in San Jose and in London, hence the accent. Um, and because it was the last session, I wanted to keep it quite light. I'm, I have one picture with an architecture diagram in it. The rest of it is some, I wanted to go a little trip down memory lane because it's quite important to ground ourselves in what our users perceive information as. Uh, so this is mainly from a perspective of a user. And all our customers are cust uh, companies or organizations who value the information asset. And if you think about what an asset is, be it a stock or a share or a house or a piece of property or a piece of information, assets need to be put to work to provide a return uh, and they need management. You don't leave your stock portfolio or your insurance or your uh, retirement scheme alone, it manages itself. And actually, one of the things that we do uh, in our information management world is we've, we, we, we think we manage our assets, but what I'm going to show you is we've got a bit of a way to go. And as we have more and more information assets, more big data, so we have to pay more attention to them because it's quite useful. We can make money from them. Well, that's really what our clients do. So I'm also going to use the concept, mathematical concept of order, degrees of order. So as I get, as we abstract up, so we get, sim we simplify. Each layer is a layer of order. Okay. So let's remember what our users think of as information, right? Genuinely, it wasn't so long ago, possibly 15 years, probably in some organisations it still is. Information is about filing cabinets and lots of them. So if you all talk to a user and say, "No, I think of my information in this way." What do we know about it? We know that it's getting, we're getting more filing cabinets, right? We know that. We can look at the statistics. We can put, doesn't matter if you live, believe in Gartner. Gartner is doubling every 19 months, which was their statistic of only a year ago. I think we're now we're moving to about 10 months. Or to put it in another way, because we're all reasonably scientific here, every nine, 10 months now, we are doubling, or all the information that we had before has now been doubled again. Right? It's a fantastically big concept, okay? And we know what's caused it uh, with big data, enterprise 2.0, and of course all this information increasingly compliant. You, there are loads of industries where you have to keep it. Uh, and actually, there's quite a. When we talk about managing the information asset, when you you have to keep it, but only for so long. You, then you have to get rid of it. And in fact, it's a liability if you don't delete it at the right time. It's a liability to delete it early because then you get called Oliver North for shredding. And it's a liability if you keep it for too long because then you've, you've got to be able to show it up, right? So there's, there's interesting stuff here. So what happened when we got the filing cabinet's got to be too big? So we abstracted to a second degree of order, right? And our users think of indexes like this, right? This is an index, right? It is how we have for centuries indexed our information when we have got too many corridors to go up and down looking in the drawers, we have to write down where you can find the information. Right? Um, so that is a picture of index. And those little tags on top, metadata. Okay? That's the best way of describing it to a user. Right? Um, at this point, because index management, not file management, but index management became uh, it became an important science. Libraries started inventing taxonomies and ontologies and things like that, but taxonomies too, so that everyone could agree when you're, when you're running a manual process, you have an ordered system where you know that everything is called something. Right? And we're going to come back to that theme because it's quite interesting when you get into big data as to how you can, uh, you need to simplify one's big data back into things. So we might be able to borrow some of the history or the lessons learned when we were running it manually. 
Right? So that all got to be too uh, difficult. People with file indexes, people with corridors of filing cabinets, uh, so we automated it. A third degree of order was that uh, automation of the first and second degrees, and of course enterprise search was probably the first one. Don't think it was un, un, I don't think it was coincidence that it was enterprise search that occurred before we had web search. Right? Companies saw the value of abstracting this first, second degrees into something that was automated. But of course now we have a very wide um, uh, ecosystem of systems that enterprises have invested in. Um, most large companies in, who are global have more than 70 of these systems. Right? They have more than one search engine. Um, they, have, they may standardize on the same search engine, but then they have different instances. Right? So what we have is a third degree of order, which is abstracts of the first and the second. Um, and what we would suggest is actually big data is coming along and making a big difference, but it's actually making uh, its my fundamental requirement is for, I'm going to suggest, a fourth degree of order. <laughs> We've also had a 10-year flatline. <laughs> this is a user perspective of search. In 2001, IDC asked the users how they, uh, if they were successful in finding what they were looking for, and they said about 50% of the time they can find what they're looking for. 2001, 2011, we, uh, we commissioned a company called MindMeter to go and do the same thing. Asked 2,000 users uh, what they thought, and less than half can find what they're looking for. So what we've had a really good decade as search specialists. Right? 